first RC Worsting Company here. I'm going to take you guys through a quick training on the Elgin GSF Geotextile Sand Filter product. This uh, presentation uh, is currently being used in place of live training for installers who want to get up and running uh, installing this product. So as an alternate to being there live, we can have them watch this and get certified accordingly. A little Elgin history. Uh, and actually, if we back this up, this obviously isn't provided in Idaho by RC Worsting Company. We got branches in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho Falls, and Spokane, Washington. Uh, check our website for specific phone numbers and addresses there. And this is manufactured by Elgin out of uh, Windsor, Connecticut. A little Elgin history real quick. Um, Elgin Corporation was founded in 1970. All products are manufactured at the facility located in Windsor. Uh, they also manufacture a bunch of other products, including some stormwater products and different things. You can check their website if you're interested in any of that stuff. There are over 100,000 systems installed worldwide. And uh, an interesting note, the Elgin Corporation is veteran-founded, led, and staffed completely. And they do a lot of uh, wounded warrior projects and free work, uh, charity work for, for veterans. So they're, they're big into supporting the vets, which, um, which I think is a great thing. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about the product. What we've got is essentially a bale, we like to call it, uh, four foot long, two foot wide, seven inches high, and they go into a trench uh, in a bed of sand. This is the GSF A42 module, which is approved in Idaho. Uh, H20 loading, and actually I think that's incorrect. It's H10 loading, so you can it can support some weight. You can walk on them. Um, they're 13 pounds per unit. It requires a four inch perforated pipe to be installed over the top of the units and those pipes have to go in with holes oriented um, facing the, the same consistent direction. I think it's four and eight, if I'm not mistaken, all the way across the bottom of the unit itself. <laughs> Filter fabric is supplied to cover the units. So we'll cut that to length for you based on your trench lengths or bed lengths in this case. So we do get an improvement in Idaho, uh, increase in application rate for the different soil types, which is shown in this chart here. Essentially it comes down to approximately a 30% reduction in drain field size by increasing application rate. That's the net result of that, which is one reason some people might wanna go with a system like this, because it would fit in less square area on the property. We also get uh, vertical separation reductions, as you see here, in impermeable layers in all soil types. You're going to get the two foot separation. Now, that is the separation from the bottom of the sand, not the bottom of the Elgin product. And you'll see how this goes in with a foot of sand below it. So, you're going to have two, in, with impermeable layers, you're going to have three foot, including the sand two foot below the sand with um, with uh, fractured layers or very permeable layers, it's going to be one foot below the sand to that layer, or two foot if you include the sand. I know it's maybe a little confusing. Anytime you go to a system over 2,500 gallons a day, it's considered an LSAS, large soil absorption system, and those effective depths double. There's a lot of other requirements with an LSAS that I won't talk about here. So what kind of applications are allowed with the Elgin product? We're looking at uh, gravity feed, pretty common way to do this. Uh, pump to D-box, pump to pressure. So you can pressurize these and we just run an additional pressure pipe down the perf pipeline that goes the length of the product to get equal distribution down the length. Uh, we certainly can do trenches, we can do cap and fill, we can do at grade systems. We can do beds, and because we can pressurize them, we can do LSAS systems, larger flows. Here's just a cross-section of a typical trench system. And what you can see here is really how the system is supposed to lay in the ground in relation to the sand profile. So you've got uh, 12 inches of sand below it, along the sides of the trench, um, that aren't filled by the Elgin product, you're going to bring the sand up seven inches to the sidewall. Obviously, you're going to put the pipe and fabric down before you do that. 
and then you could have a varying width of trench. Most most trenches in Idaho are 36, but we they allow up to a four foot trench, um, and so or I'm sorry, six foot wide trench. So so you know we've got options there as far as how wide we can go with the product in a trench, and then of course there's beds as well. Uh, real quick ex explanation of treatment with a standard rock and pipe system, you have essentially a rock bed with a pipe in the middle. When the water comes out, it filters down, flows down through the rock, hits the soil interface, and that's where your, your biomat is formed. That's where treatment essentially occurs. And so you have nothing really stopping it from getting there fairly quickly and making that the place where all the treatment has to happen. Um, when you contrast that with the GSF system, we have water flowing in over the top of the media itself where we have, um, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, uh, an amount of fibrous fabric that is woven throughout the Elgin unit, and the water will flow through that fabric and over the, the eggshell or egg crate type media inside the unit, eventually hit the sand interface, and then as the water continues to travel through the sand interface. Um, it gets the benefit of sand filtration. You get quite a bit of uh, you get quite a bit of, uh, of just actual filtration of, of wastewater of the particulates, the total suspended solids, the um, the uh, pathogens, and so ultimately, when you hit the sand interface to the soil, which is you know down in this neck of the woods. Um, you're going to have pretty clean effluent by the time it hits that point. So it's it's really improving the quality of effluent by the time it drops down into the soil interface, and that's the whole idea of it. Um, so some of the testing that they've done, they've seen reductions of soil interface down to five milligrams per liter BOD5 and TSS. That may not mean a whole lot to many of you, but you know it's a, it's a huge reduction from what septic tank effluent would come out as. So as you can see, this is a system where they've dug it up and pulled up the unit. You can, you can see a limited biomat that builds up at the sand interface. Um, but there's, but you know, in looking at this, you can see that they get pretty consistent coverage to that interface. I mean, it looks very consistent across there. So that's a good thing in that you're most assuredly using the volume of the Elgin product to disperse the wastewater and actually treat before it hits the sand. And then at the sand, you're seeing really nice coverage there. So this is the geotextile that I mentioned, um, and this is the geotextile product, the fabric product that's woven throughout the Elgin units. It provides surface air for filtr filtration and biological development, uh, promotes aerobic bacteria growth away from the soil interface, preserves unit sand interface by minimizing clogging and promotion of unsaturated flow, provides a primary stage for treatment as well. So this is really what you're getting the biology to attach to and ultimately pull some of the constituents from the wastewater as it passes through it. So if you look at really the best way to distribute that textile inside the Elgin unit, they come up with probably the most effective way possible to do that in that they're weaving it um, throughout the bale products. So you can see on the far right, um, you get 4.5 cubic feet, I'm assuming, of surface area versus the rest if you had a circular or square or V-shaped product. So you're, you're improving your contact with the product in the surface area by configuring it that way. So here we can kind of see a good, nice cutaway of the Elgin unit. I think I showed this earlier as well. <clears throat> Essentially, septic tank effluents dose through the fabric. You have open air channels within the module to support aerobic bacterial growth and oxygen transport. So these systems don't have to be vented to get oxygen to them unless they're over 18 inches from finished grade. Then they have to be ventilated uh, with some piping, and that's something that will be outlined in the installation manual. The A42 unit, the ones, the units we're talking about that are approved in Idaho, have 65 square foot of geotextile fabric per module, which is eight square feet of biofabric every one square foot of soil interface. So you have a lot of, of fabric that sees wastewater 
prior to the sand actually seeing wastewater. So you get a pretty good amount of treatment just through the Elgin unit alone prior to the sand interface. Here's a nice picture of the amount of fabric that's in one unit. And so we have one two foot by four foot by seven inch unit includes 24 linear feet or 65 square feet of fabric packed in there. That's a good thing. Benefits of the GSF, uh, high groundwater situation, certainly what that's what drives most of this. Impermeable soils, rapidly permeable soils, space limitations. Um, that's, that's primarily the bulk of, of what we're doing here. We do not have with Elgin currently an Idaho approval for nitrogen reduction. Why would we select the product? Again, it's passive treatment. So when you compare this product to, uh, you know, some of the more commonly known treatment packages, like, you know, some of the extended treatment packages that Idaho has approved, you get a, a more passive treatment. So that's all underground. Uh, you don't have to have any operation and maintenance that goes along with it that's required by the state. You don't have operators that come out every year and, and they don't charge you for that service because they're not doing it obviously so it's kind of a nice way to forego some of that ongoing operation maintenance with the product now, they are fairly low maintenance because there's not a lot of moving parts uh, in some cases you have a pump tank that you may have to maintain but that, that would be about the most complicated part of it uh, they're fairly easy to install and they are actually lower cost when compared to extended treatment package systems sand mounds recirculating gravel filters um, even sand filters. So, uh, essentially, with the Elgin GSF, we have no startup period. They are great for intermittent use. So, for vacation homes and summer camps, it's a nice solution for that because they start right up and actually um, filter through the product and the sand. Uh, there's a mechanical filtration that occurs. Uh, and also, we have a nice treatment for large cell absorption systems. So in, instead of putting in a treatment plant that would have to have an operator and be maintained, this is an alternative to that. Again, as I mentioned, no nitrogen reduction approval in Idaho as of yet. We're kind of limited on slopes, 20% for below grade systems, 12% for above grade capping fill. Our buried depth is one to three feet in Idaho. Uh, we don't like to see water softeners connected to these, and that's pretty consistent with any wastewater on-site septic system, but these are a little bit more susceptible to fouling because of water softener discharge. Uh, garbage disposals are probably not the best thing, and we're looking at, we were told 70 foot of gravity lateral maximum, but um, you know Elgin's a little bit open on extending that slightly depending on your configuration, but they'd like to keep the trenches as short as possible. So the requirements for the GSF is we're only allowed to use medium sand per 3.2.8.1.2 of the Idaho Technical Guidance Manual for subsurface disposal. And that's a sand typically, a sand that would be approved by your local health district and they can point you to a pit that has that required sand. Uh, all installers are trained by Elgin representative, which is basically what I'm doing here today for you. Um, first installation inspected by trained Elgin representatives. So we're going to try to get out there and see your first installation. Hopefully we can help you avoid any pitfalls. System design options. So we can do standard trenches. Everybody are, everybody's pretty familiar with those. We can do a contoured trench. So these units can be turned to match the contour. Here's an example of that. If you look carefully, you can see where the two pieces change directions. The four inch pipe actually has a piece of solid pipe through that section so it doesn't dispose of wastewater directly into the sand without going through the Elgin unit. And that's the only requirement for turning these in this manner. The pipe itself doesn't necessarily have to go down the center of the Elgin product um, through the length of the drain field lateral. So as you can see here, it's okay to have it vary from center slightly uh, as long as you're over the top of the Elgin product with the perf perforated pipe. So if we look at a sizing example, we have a four bedroom home, 300 gallons a day, according to the state of Idaho. It's a B1 soil. 
We're going to do a pressure to D box. So we have a pump that has to pump it up to a distribution box and uh, four foot to groundwater from soil surface. Here is our loading rate for this application. The loading rate, of course, translates into a trench area requirement. So at 300 gallons per day, we divide by the loading rate for that soil type. We get 375 square foot of drain filled trench bottom required. That doesn't include the sidewall, of course, just like any drain field sizing calculation we do in the state. We're going to determine the minimum number of Elgin units. So if in this case, we're doing a trench system. It's six per bedroom for a trench system. It's more for beds. So make sure you take a look at that column if you do a do sizing for a trench. So six times four is 24 Elgin units. Uh, 24 Elgin units times four foot per unit give us a total linear foot minimum of 96 feet. And that's just the Elgin units end to end if we're doing three foot to six foot wide trenches. Uh, so then we're going to determine the trench width based on square footage and linear footage of Elgin units. So we're going to take 375 square feet and divide that by 96. It gives us a four foot wide trench. We're rounding up to four foot. It's 3.91 feet, but I think it makes sense to just round it up since we've are all used to kind of working in one foot increments on trench widths. So this trench would need to be 96 feet, but we add six inches on each end. So it's actually 97 feet and it'll be four foot wide. Um, we could break that up because of our limitation to the length to two trenches. So in this case, we're gonna add six inches to the end of each trench. And so ultimately the trenches are going to be two trenches at 49 feet to keep us under that 70 foot trench length uh, requirement. So here's a picture of kind of what this looks like. You can see the, the pressure line coming in. In this case, it's a one inch feed line from the pump system. We have a velocity reducer. In this case, it, it just necks up to four inch and hits a elbow to slow it down before it goes to the D box. The D box distributes the wastewater equally to each trench. And then you can see that we have six foot be between trenches, which is required by the state. We've got a four foot wide trench with the Elgin in the middle. We got one foot on each side because the Elgin product itself is two foot wide. And so that gives you a pretty good idea, 49 foot trench length there for the total length of each trench. Here's a side view and you can kind of see how this lays in. This is a below grade system got to put a cover over it. There is no need for, uh, there's no need for venting. Now the foot of cover, just so you understand, is from the top of the Elgin unit, not from the top of the pipe, the perf pipe or fabric. So you get, you gain a little bit there because you, you can measure that one foot from the top of the Elgin unit itself. So our dosing methods, once again, are gravity pump to gravity pressure dose, uh, so they want to dose the A42 modules with less than three gallons per module per dose. So if you're calculating a drain field dose volume, you want to keep in mind the maximum dose per module is going to be 25 gallons per day. And so that's how we would size a larger system that's not related specifically to bedrooms for calculating the flow. Uh, 25 gallons per day, you know, you would take your total daily flow, say it's an RV park, and you divide that by 25 gallons and that's how many units you would obviously install in the ground. Uh, <clears throat> talked a little bit about the D-box and velocity reduction, pump to gravity. So that's already said. This is a pump up to gravity. So you can see the D-box over here by the excavator. So the pump's going to pump it into that D-box. This is all obviously going to be buried over time. That's a good example of something that's up above finished grade. Here's the and some bad pictures of some D boxes with some speed levelers on them. That's pretty common to see. We haven't done a lot of D box installations in the panel health district, but other districts have. It's getting more popular. Here's a pressure dose system. One of the things I want to uh, point out here is we need to have caps on the end of the perf pipe where the pressure dose piping enters the perf pipe. So that's sealed off and the water doesn't blow out that end before it gets pushed to the perf pipe hole level and eventually trickles out over the top of the Elgin units. 
So that is one error that we see with this installation. Um, at the end of the ladders, you want some way to possibly clean or, or uh, you know, snake those laterals out, even maybe pressure jet. We like to use uh, PVC conduit sweeps because they're a nice wide sweep. I'm not exactly sure what they used here, but they used a couple. What looks to be 45s on the 4-inch and then brought the pressure pipe up in through it. Not, not a bad way necessarily to do that. Um, again, dosing methods, you can kind of see here your pressure pipe goes into the perf pipe. You've got a four inch cap with a hole drilled in it to accommodate the size of the pressure pipe. It just kind of gives you an idea what this is going to look like on the interior when the pressure pipe is, is energized with wastewater. And then you've got the clean out on the end, as I mentioned. More details on that. Certainly you can pause this video if you want to look at this for a longer duration. System installation. So you're going to excavate the trench, place specified sand, and again, it's medium sand approved by the state of Idaho in six inch lifts and stabilize it. So you're going to want to tamp it with the bucket or, or some kind of tamper to kind of stabilize it, make sure it's, it's not compacted, but it's laid in there even and, and consistent. You're going to lay, so it's six foot lifts, you're going to do two lifts to get the one foot below the product. Place the modules in the trench end in, like you see here. You're going to want to place the modules in the trench with the white painted stripes facing up, and we'll talk about that more. So yeah, our, our uh, perf pipe's going to go in with the holes at four and eight o'clock. I think that's what I said earlier. And then we're going to put a wire hoop to hold those in place to make sure that they don't move around when we place the fabric over the top and drop some dirt in around it to hold it in place during backfill. Now, certainly these hoops do not go in after the fabric has been installed because we don't want to punch holes in the fabric. So make sure this is done prior to the fabric installation. Here's a nice shot of what it looks like with the fabric. You're going to actually, if you're good at wrapping presents, this might be an opportunity for you. You're going to actually wrap this fabric around the end of the, the bale at the end of the trench just to make sure that it covers the sides and fits around the perf pipe that you'll have to connect to. It's a good picture of what this looks like. Those pipes sticking up are just uh, inspection ports, so you know, that's not required in every state. So you're going to bring the sand up around the sides like you see there. You're going to cover seed and divert water from the system. So it's nice to mound it a little bit just so water doesn't sit rest in the system. You're going to want to backfill it a little higher than anticipated so when it does settle it's not going to create a depression. Quick video.
All right, there we have that. <clears throat> Quickly, I'll take you through a few do's and don'ts. Ah, don't. Don't install under driveway. I don't know who this guy is, but apparently does a lot of that. Do remove surface vegetation. Hopefully you have some use for this surface vegetation if it is at your site, above your drain field site, but maybe not. You'll get in trouble. Do prepare the surface area. So you're going to want to scarify the soil if it's going to be an at-grade system. Turn it up, chunk it up, make sure that the water will pass through the soil. You don't have any organic layer interface that's going to impede that. Do install with a white stripe up. As I mentioned, you can see here you got a white painted stripe. The, the upside has more fabric showing than the downside. So usually when you put these in, you can look down the trench before you put the perf pipe over the top and instantly see if you've got all of the uh, bales installed correctly. You want to then tint with fabric. Uh, I'm sorry, don't tint with fabric. So if you tint it and bury it and then put a lot of weight on it, you can actually uh, crush the pipe. So you see here, this is really badly tinted and they backfilled around the sides. So, you know, you got to lay that sand up around the pipe before you backfill the sides. So you can kind of push that fabric around the perf pipe. You do place fabric down the sides. So you can see here, there's fabric down along the sides that keeps the sand from migrating into the product itself. Do place sand up the sides. This is a beautiful installation. It shows how they have prevented the tenting with uh, the sand that they put against the, the pipe prior to laying the sand along the sides in this case. <clears throat> Do cap the ends. You can see these ends are capped. These are not here. So you want to make sure the ends are capped, especially on a, well, any system, but on a pressurized system, on, on a gravity system, you're going to cap the the distal end or lateral end on a pressurized system, you're going to cap both ends and you're going to drill a hole in the, the front end to accommodate the entrance of the pipe. Install deeper than 18 inches without venting. Don't do that. You're going to need to vent. Look in the installation manual for information on how to do that. But if you go deeper than 18, you're going to need to vent it to get oxygen to the treatment. Do remove larger rocks. Here's a big one. Don't do whatever this is. Looks like they tried to maintain a consistent trench length. This is probably a repair. You can kind of see the old drain field here at a shallower depth. We're going to want to keep the laterals consistent, the same length. I just noticed there's another piece of pipe along this other. I don't Anyway, this is just goofiness. Divert drainage and runoff. Hopefully it ain't this bad. Maintenance. <clears throat> Maintenance is pretty... Easy. Routine pumping of the septic tank, that's typical and, and consistent with any septic system. Uh, septic tank effluent filter should be cleaned. I do recommend an effluent filter in front of these. Um, there is a requirement in the state of Idaho. If you pump, you have to have an effluent filter. If you're gravity, you don't, so it may not have an effluent filter in front of it if you choose not to use one. Uh, pressure distribution systems should have the LPP lines blown out annually. So the lateral line should be blown out annually. I don't know if anybody ever does that. It's nice to at least flush them individually to get the bio slime out of them, but that's kind of a nice thing to do. Uh, not very common though. Training and design. Elgin requires training for distributors and installers. Of course, that's what we're doing here. You can do it online or in person. We've done a lot of online training and this is our video for I'm sorry, we've done a lot of in-person training. So this is our video for the online training. Uh, first install, install support. So once you get ready to do your first system, give us a call. We'll come out and help you with that. We've got some laminated trifolds that make kind of the main bullet points more concise and less difficult to weed through than the full manual. Any design support you need, we're doing some CAD work and different things to help you get your permit through the health district. Uh, out of Coeur d'Alene, I'm the guy. That's my cell number. That's my email address. Aubrey out of Idaho Falls. She can take care of you as well. So give us a call. Let us know if we can help. Thank you. These are the Elgin contacts. So if you need to go to the factory, Scott Moore, Alex Mando, two great guys that know the product well, can help you there as well.